Good morning. We're so glad you're here. That was a, if you were listening to the song, I'm going to ask them to sing it one more time because that's our invitation song here this morning. This is the well service. We're inviting you to come to the well. Today we are will have Holy Communion. And that is absolutely the meal of, of a well. In which you and I, we come to the well and we are made whole and we are made well again. So we all just sing just a little bit of that song again so that they can hear the words as we do. And
leading up to and including Easter week. So you will continue to get these uh, up through Easter Sunday week. And uh, it, it is just so nice to to just see the, the thoughts or to read the thoughts that people have about Easter and the Easter story. So please take advantage of that. I uh, want to remind you that uh, every Wednesday between now and Easter, we are having an, a service on Wednesday at 11.45. It lasts about a half hour, and it's immediately followed by a light lunch that is served by the various circles of the church. So they're having fun doing it. They're having fun presenting that. And we hope that you will come to that very, very good service that gives you a chance to really meditate and think on what Lent is all about. So we hope to see you continuing to come to that. It is being very well attended, and, and we hope that continues right through the Wednesday before Easter. There will be an Easter sunrise service on Easter morning at 7 o'clock at Metfield Clubhouse. So we encourage you to come out there at 7 for that Easter sunrise service. And this is a great opportunity to invite someone else, someone that, that might not come to church a lot, to come with you for that for that service that will be held. And we promise to make that a special service for everyone. So we hope to see you there as well. Uh, bizarre workshops. Uh, some of you may be new to the church, and, and if you are, you may not be aware that about this time in March, uh, every year, the, the United Methodist Women start working downstairs from 9 until 2 every Thursday day, Thursday day. And uh, you can say half a day, whole day, however long you want. They bring a lunch and, and they just work on all kinds of craft projects for the upcoming, um, the bazaar. <laughs> oh yeah! The bazaar people are actually working on things for the bazaar. <laughs> And you don't have to be, I won't say real smart, you don't have to be real crafty in order to come and help. So, so you come and help with them because it's fun, great fellowship, good food, and, and they get stuff that made also. Okay, the goat bank is back. And we love it when the goat bank's here because we just have to dig deep enough to find quarters. And when you take those quarters and put it in that long tube, the tube that's called the goat bank, then we gather money and they're trying to gather $170 and they will use that $170 this time to get a gift of a gardener's basket. So uh, we hope that uh, all of you will participate in that. Get your kids to participate in it because it feels good to be able to, to make your little contribution to help buy these things that are, that are really needed by people around the world. So we hope that you will help with that. Easter lilies, you can get them now, buy them in the office at, at um, they're just $12, and so go to the office and get your Easter lily, and there's going to be an Easter egg hunt and pancake breakfast for the kids. Read about that in the bulletin, because that is going to be a fun time. God bless. It's great to have you all here with us, um, just worshiping God. If you're able, please stand and join us in singing your grace in the mouth.
the time. We are glad you're here, and we need you to help us make sure everybody's made to feel welcome. If you're visiting with us today, I offer you a welcome, and I'm going to depend on somebody else to help me make sure you're made to feel welcome. Will you greet there? Everyone around you, meet as many people as you can.
Amen. All right, guys, y'all are welcome to go to Sunday school or stay here with your parents for worship. We're going to continue our worship service with some more praise and worship music and just praising the Lord. So, again, if you're able, please stand and join us in worship.
Um, this is Cherie Ford. She has just become a part of the church family. She hasn't joined or anything, but she's already up here singing in the praise team. And she is a fourth grade school teacher at Bonnie Grimes Elementary School in Rogers. So she drives from Rogers here. But one of the things you may not know, know about Cherie is that last September, she, would di she was diagnosed with renal failure. And so she needs a kidney. She needs a, in order for her life to last, go on, she does need a healing in her life. And so I watched her this morning sing, Jesus, you are my healer, knowing that she believes that fully. And so I want to ask you to pray with me for her. And for her to have a kidney, it means someone has to give a kidney up. Someone possibly even has to die. And we certainly don't want that, but we do pray that that, that kidney donor will be found. So we pray with you. Lord, we thank you so much that the words that we've sung this morning, we believe in our heart that you're a healer. And so we lift up your daughter here and we pray over her. We do pray for her healing. We pray for the donation of a kidney. We pray for your power to work in her that, so that we will know the miracle of your love and your grace in a fresh and wonderful way. We thank you for her. We thank you for her faith in you. And we ask you, Lord, to reveal to, to our sister in Christ the very finest for her physical health, for her financial health, for her spiritual life, for her emotions, for her career, all. Lord, because you're our healer. And it's in your holy name we pray. And together we say, Amen. I'd like to invite everyone to be seated, please. As you take your seats, if you would, there's an insert in your bulletin that has our celebrations, our cares, and our concerns on it. This morning, there's a number of things that I'd like to share with the congregation this morning. First off, as quickly, is at the very bottom, it says Bella Vista Wesleyan Church, and that's the family of faith that we'll be praying for here at the church this week. As we pray for our church, we'll be also praying for the praying for the Bella Vista Wesleyan Church, and we ask that you would do so also. We have a few people. We've been blessed that the board that we have in front of the office, that we write on there those that are in the hospitals and those that have just been released and are rehabilitating. That list has grown short. However, we have lost a number of people in our congregation here this month, and just yesterday we lost uh, Jack Tingblad. Jack passed away yesterday morning. If you don't know Jack, you may know his wife, Leah, who sings in the choir, and I don't see Eric here this morning, but his son Eric is with us quite often when he's not working on Sunday morning, so keep the Tingblad family in your prayers. Their serv the service for Jack will be at 11 a.m. on Monday, March 11th, so... Uh, Remember that day for the services. We've also here recently lost Roy Young. His service will be on Saturday, March the 9th at 10 a.m. And we also lost uh, a week or so ago Paul Johnson. And please remember his wife Gloria in your prayers. And Paul's service will be Saturday the 16th at 2 p.m. So we have three services of death and resurrection coming here quickly to our church. It is what we you know, are proud to be a retirement community and we certainly welcome and we are just, honestly, Brother Jamie does great funerals. <laughs> if you've not been, and, and we don't talk about this much in this service, but if you have not come to a funeral at Bella Vista Church, it's actually a blessing. Brother Jamie is, delves into the lives of those that we know and those we don't know and, and works very hard and tells their story very well. And it's always a blessing to hear the stories of those that have passed on and a blessing to remember the lives and to know a little bit more about those in our congregation. So I would ask that you make it a point, even if you don't know some of the folks that we've lost, to maybe attend their funeral and uh, learn a little bit more about them and about the life of faith that they've lived here in our, in our, in our community and often around the world. Before I pray, I will... I want to let you know that it's our offering time that after our pastoral prayer this morning, we will pass our baskets for our offering that we will take up. We always ask that if you've not prepared to make an offering, you've not committed to you know that for long term, that you look in your pocket and find a dollar or some other little bit of paper money or coins, something to put in the offering basket. And we ask that you do that not necessarily for the amount of money it is, but just so that you remember 
that so many live on so little. I'm very thankful to be back from Guatemala. And there I did experience those people that we talked about that live on less than a dollar. We treated nearly 800 people with our doctors and dentists did, and most of those people had never been to a doctor or dentist in their life, from little children to grandparents. So there are still many people in this world that live on less than a dollar a day, and I ask that you remember that in our offering time. As we uh, prepare to go to God in prayer, remember our church, pray for one another, pray for all the families of faith here in Northwest Arkansas. So if we would, let us pray. Gracious God, we certainly are thankful to be here. We're thankful to be warm in a place that is comfortable, with friends, with family, with new people to meet and enjoy. Lord, we are just grateful to be here. We lift up today our church in our time of loss of, of friends and family. We lift up the Johnson family, the Ting Blacks, and also the Youngs, and many others. We've had quite a bit of loss this year, God, and we pray for all of them, for healing, comfort on all the hearts, for peace for each of us in times of struggle. Lord, we ask your blessings on this offering. As we gather together and give, may we give in joy. May we give honoring all that we have been given, giving back something of what you have blessed us with, remembering that we have so much and many have so little. Yet we all are able to possess, understand, to enjoy, to live into your love through your grace. That's what we ask this morning, Lord, that your grace be poured out on us, that we live in joy with you now and forevermore. In your holy and precious name we pray.
Jan mentioned that the devotionals are available to you, and I remind you about the devotionals. This week we're we're working on a sermon series called The Cast Characters Easter Story, and each week we're focusing on one of the cast members. You, you know we've we've had Peter. Peter showed up. Peter's even here this morning, believe it or not. And um, and then last week we had Pilate, and I saw Pilate's family come in. Where is Pilate? Um, yeah, Pilate, Pilate's even here this morning. I mean, we're, this is a happening church when you have the real disciples show up. Um, and now, today, we're having Judas. Special day. Because you've all been so good, Judas is coming to see you. Um, but we have this devotion, if you'd like to receive a paper copy there on the desk or there in the narthex. So you, they are available online. If we have an email address, you'll receive them in the mail from the church, or if you're on the Facebook page, you can follow on, uh, also on Facebook. So I lift that up to you. We've got great persons in our church family that have, from all walks of life and all ages, that have written these, and so we appreciate that today. Um, Pastor Lee gave us a commercial for memorial services and funerals around here, but we're not we're not in the business that the Duncans are. So um, we are. You don't have to get mine for your funeral, but it helps occasionally. <laughs> you like to pre-plan around here. Um, glad you're here. Today we are going to read from Luke's Gospel, the 22nd chapter, verses 1 through 6. And each of the Gospels tells us a little bit different portrait or gives us a little bit different picture of Judas. And so we're looking at what Luke says this morning. So if you brought your Bible with you, I invite you to follow along. Or if you just want to simply listen, I'll read out the NIV translation. And in Luke's Gospel, the 22nd chapter, verses 1 through 6, these are the words we read. Now the feast of unleavened bread called the Passover who was approaching. And the chief priest and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus. But they were afraid of the people. And then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discovered and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Why are all of you looking at me? Stop staring at me. Were you there? What's the matter? Do you feel uncomfortable in my presence? I know. I know. I crucified him. I might as well have driven nailed him to myself. Worse, I did not have the courage to see it that far. I took the easy way out before he reached the cross. Go ahead. I deserve it. But be careful. If you condemn me, you run the risk of condemning yourself. And remember that in your times of deepest shame, you have not approached the remorse I felt that morning. There's no explanation you will understand. I know the explanation, and I do not understand. Don't make me some hideous monster. Don't make me darker than I really am. Some image of evil incarnate. I was only a man in flesh and blood like you. I held no secret of power of evil. I just let evil have its power over me. I was only a man. Jesus called me along with the others. I was one of the 12, but I thought of myself smarter than the rest, more intellectual. I felt that I was above all this adoration of someone who was, after all, only a man. I never called him Lord. My highest praise for him was Rabbi. I never gave him control over my life my being. I always held something back, and by holding some back, I gave interest to Satan himself. My pride would not allow me to give it to, all to Jesus. I would not let him be my Lord. So my heart became filled with evil and took, and took over my heart. Don't let it happen to you. Please, don't let it happen to you.
Judas is perhaps the most intriguing character in the story of Jesus because of how little we know about him. It is thought by some that his last name, Iscariot, actually signifies Kiriath, a, a town in Judea, the southern portion of the land, whereas all the other disciples come from Galilee, so he would be sort of the oddball. We don't know this for certain. Judas, we're told in one gospel, kept the purse and would sometimes steal from it. But in the other gospels, we're not told this information at all. What we do know is that Judas, at some point, just got frustrated with Jesus. In Mark's gospel, is when a woman anointed Jesus with expensive perfume, that that was too much for Judas. He went to the Pharisees and the chief priests and offered to betray him. In other gospels, it's, it's other reasons. The important point was that Judas betrayed Jesus' location where he would stay on the night of the Passover, near the Garden of Gethsemane. In one version, he's paid 30 pieces of silver for this, and all the Gospels were just told he receives money. It's in Matthew's Gospel that he goes to return the money, and because it's just blood money, and they say, well, that's the payment. We don't want it back. And Judas throws the money on the ground and runs out and hangs himself because of the guilt he feels. And that's it. That's the end of the story of Judas. It's such a central part in what happens to Jesus, and it's surprising how little we know. Is it fate? Is this what Judas is meant to do? Or is it a decision on his own? It's hard to tell from the stories when you really look at them. He's a most intriguing figure, this Judas is scared. You know, it's always been a popular ideal or practice to name your child a biblical name, whether it's your boy or girl. You've named them names. I was given the name Jamie, and when I was a little boy, I hated my name Jamie because that is my given name. My father's name was James. His grandfather's name was James, but they couldn't call me James. They had to call me Jamie. And as a little boy in the 70s, the only two Jamies I knew were Jamie Summers, a bonnet woman, and Jamie Farr on MASH. And that wasn't a flattering Jamie, was it? <laughs> and, but other kids I went to, little guys, schoolmates, students I went to school with, you know, they, they had names that were more he-man names, like Matthew and Luke and Mark and John and Peter and Philip and Thomas and... <coughs> And Andrew and Abias and Bartholomew and Simon, I never went to school with. But you know what? Since I graduated from school, I've met a lot of Thaddeuses and Simons. Never met a Bartholomew. The one I can promise you I've never met is Judas. Have you? Did anybody call you, I mean, name you? Did your mama name you Shannon Judas? Or I think Pastor Lee's mother may have thought about it. But, um, <laughs> um, but anyway, he, he got the name Benjamin Lee, or Lee Benjamin, one of those orders. Um, but nobody has, does anybody here know a Judas? Is there a Judas in your family tree? You have a Uncle Judas? You know, Aunt Judas? Um, we don't know Judas' name. We just don't know Judas. And in fact, you know what? We really don't know a lot about Judas in the cast of characters. We don't. But yet, Judas is the one who played the villain in the Easter story. But I mean, Judas, he did not um, try Jesus. Judas did not condemn Jesus. Judas did not spit upon Jesus. Judas did not mock Jesus. Judas did not sentence Jesus. Judas did not whip Jesus. Judas did not gamble for his clothes. He didn't do those things to Jesus. So why is Judas the villain in the Easter story? What did he do? Well, as you know, many of you know, he betrayed Jesus. He betrayed him with a kiss. He was the Benedict Arnold of the group. He was the one who was 
the traitor. He committed an act of treason against Jesus. And though we don't know a lot about Judas, what we do know is that he was called to follow the Lord. And when he was called to follow the Lord, I'm sure he had the same amount of excitement and anticipation and joy that the other disciples had. That he was full of vigor that to be a part, to sit in the presence of the Lord. I doubt that when he, he followed Jesus that his thought was, you know what, one day I'm just going to betray that man. That's what I'm going to do. I don't think that was his thought. What I do think was his thought is that when he saw the Lord, he saw him. He believed him. He trusted him. And then he followed him. Just like the other disciples did. And Judas, we know, he, he rose to a rank of superiority within the disciples. And that he was chosen to be the treasurer. Now, they didn't do a background check on him. You know, maybe you think they should have. But they didn't. They trusted Judas. Judas must have had a, a, a good reputation. There must have been an understanding that he had a great skill that we're just going to, we think Judas would be a great, great treasure. He's not known for greed. He's not known as ever embezzling. He's not known of being dishonest. So we're going to choose Judas to be the treasure. So we still have this question. About Judas. Where did Judas go wrong? Why did Judas betray the Lord? Now let's think about it. There's, there's several options that we can think about of why Judas betrayed Jesus. One, was it part of God's plan? Was he so filled with Satan? Was he so filled with the devil that he didn't have a choice in the matter? And his free will was taken away. And he was made to betray. But if you think that way, then you have to think, do we ever lose our free will? Does, does God stop free will in our life? Does he ever block our ability to choose? Another way we could think of why Jesus, Judas betrayed Jesus is because simply he was and he hid the motive, that greedy motive in his heart from the rest. And then, finally, when he found out he could make a little money off betraying Jesus, he was willing to do it. Now, all he got was 30 pieces of silver. To us today, that'd be a lot of money. You know, silver, silver's kind of gone up a little bit. But you know what? In that day and time, that was a normal amount you'd pay for enslaved person. I mean, that was an extravagant amount. It was a nice amount, but it was an extravagant amount or unheard of amount of money. 30 pieces of silver is pretty modest. Or was did he betray the Lord because he was disappointed in who Jesus was? Did he, did he consider that he was going to be this military hero, this great Messiah that would come and Jesus had met his expectations. He thought he was false. So he thought, I'll just get rid of him. Is that why he betrayed Jesus? Or did he betray Jesus also because he thought he was helping Jesus? And he had heard, heard Jesus say that he was going to die. Maybe he thought Jesus was missing the mark. He thought Jesus was giving up. That Jesus wasn't moving fast enough to do what was prophesied in the Old Testament. And so he thought that if he could nudge him a little bit and be involved with the enemy, that Jesus could demonstrate his power before he died. And he would survive. Why did Jesus, Judas betray him? We can debate that. We can talk about it. We can think about it. Let's not get stuck on that. Because the question, same question can be asked of us. 
Why do we ever betray the Lord? I mean, have you ever been in the place of Judas where, where you have betrayed the Lord? You've betrayed the Lord in your thoughts. Or you've betrayed the Lord in your actions. Or you've betrayed the Lord in your deeds. You've betrayed the Lord in your mouth. See, but you and I, if we're real honest with ourselves, we know that we're not above Judas. And we've not been above Judas at times in our life. We may have not received 30 pieces of silver for betraying the Lord. We may have not betrayed the Lord with the signal of a kiss. But we've betrayed him. We've betrayed him. We've betrayed him when we've not honored our relationship with him. We've betrayed him when we've turned away from him. We've betrayed him when sin has influenced our life in a greater way than the goodness of the Lord. We're all guilty of betrayal. Judas was so overcome with guilt for betrayal that, he, that guilt destroyed his life. And that happens for us too. When we're not willing to give our betrayal over to him and then receive the forgiveness that he offers to us because he offers forgiveness to us. And see, this morning we're coming to the table of the Lord. It's a, it's a table of forgiveness. It's, it's a banquet of redemption in which you and I are invited to partake in his act of devotion for us and giving of himself through his life, through his body, and through his blood, so that you and I are forgiven of any act of betrayal that we've committed against the Lord. And to receive the forgiveness that he offers to us and to absolutely be changed in the power of his love. See? Why did Judas betray Jesus? Why was he made to wear the black hat and the disciples? What was his motive? What was his reason? When have you worn the black hat too? When have you betrayed? Lord, we thank you today that you're a God of mercy and you're a God of redemption and you're a God of grace and you're a God of forgiveness. And those acts of betrayal that we've committed against you, Lord, you don't hold against us as we come before you and we ask forgiveness and we confess our sin to you. And so, Lord, this morning we ask you to prepare us to come before your communion table and to bless us with the knowledge of forgiveness Touch us with your mercy. And Father, in ways that are unique to all our unique personalities, to make us aware of your grace that saves us. And it is an amazing saving name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. And together we sing. Amen. This morning, um, you're invited to come to the communion table not made to come. It's, it's your own choice whether or not you want to come or not. And the children are downstairs and they're going to come up with us. If you need to go um, get one of your children, you're invited to do that so you can take communion as a family. But um, when we come to the table this morning, you're going to receive a piece of bread. And then we have a cup here. And you're asked to take that bread and dip it in the cup before you partake. And partake. If you have um, special needs, we have a special wafer here. I think we do. Yep, we do. It's here. And um, that's here for you. If you're unable to come to us, we'll be more than happy to come to you. If you'll just allow us to know that we want to come and share with you in communion that way. But what we want you to know is this is the Lord's table. And as you come, it is our prayer that you will encounter powerful, in Christ in his presence. 
since we come, we want to come in a word and right manner. So we're going to share in a corporate prayer confession. It will be presented for you on the screen, or it's printed for you in the bulletin, in the additional section of the bulletin. That helps you to see better. And then after we've shared in our communion and we've remembered what this meal means, then you will be invited to come to the table with the Lord. I invite you to join me as we pray together. Lord, genuine repentance involves two things. The dying away of the old self and the coming to the life of the new. The dying away of the old self is to be genuinely sorry for our sin. To hate it more and more. To run away from Coming to life of the new self is the wholehearted joy in God through Christ and the delight to every kind of good as God wants us to be. Together as Christ's body, we now confess our sin and express our longing to live in joyful obedience to God. Amen. I want to remind you of what took place on that, that holy night. Jesus and his disciples. They gathered in an upper room chamber in a, in a holy place. It was made holy by the presence of the Lord. They gathered there for the Passover meal, and during the Passover meal, the Lord became a servant, and he took bread, and he gave thanks over that bread, and then he broke the bread. And he gave it to the disciples, who said, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. And do this in remembrance of me. And after he had offered them bread and when the supper was over, he took the cup. And he gave thanks to the Lord over that cup. And then he offered it to the disciples and said, Take and drink, for this is my blood that was shed for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so as we gather together, we gather here as holy and living sacrifice, you know it's Christ offering that he's made for us. And we gather here in the blessed mystery of faith that Christ has died and Christ has risen and that Christ will come again. And so, Lord, we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine and upon us and that you would make us be for you the body and the blood of your Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, perfected in your love, grafted in your grace, made whole through the forgiveness of sins. It's in the saving name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Together we say, Those that will be assisting us in communion to come forward now. You're invited to come.
you're willing, and only if you're willing, if you'll join hands with somebody there. Some you don't want to do, just clash your hands and hold your own hands, and we'll be fine. Not everybody likes to do that, I understand. That's right. Lord, we thank you today that you're a God of grace, and you're a God of mercy, and you're a God of thanksgiving. We thank you for what this table represents. That is our knowledge that you don't claim us as Judas's, as traitors to you. That you claim us as your children who are loved, who are redeemed, who have a second chance. So today, Lord, we fall once again in love with you and we express our love and our thankfulness to you. And we thank you for the person on our left on our right, whose hands we hold, and we pray, Father, for them that they will know that the touch of your hand is on their lives and that the touch of your hand is on our lives. It's in the wonderful name of your Son, in the saving name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Together we say, Amen. We're going to close in a song this morning, and it's a song of invitation. If you'd like to come part of this church family, we would be honored to receive you here, and you're invited to come. I'll transfer your membership and your profession of faith in Christ. If you'd like to be prayed with, we're here too for you. And at any point in time that you would want to talk to us during the week, just call Pastor Lee, myself, Jan, we're available to you. Or if you have questions about anything involving the church, we would do our best to answer them for you or direct you in that to the right person. If you have questions about membership, we'd love to visit you as well. I invite you to stand and join with us as we sing. <coughs>
he's six, seven, almost seven. And so Justin and Audra Twombly, and you're with Arvis, and you're in the school system, right? With literacy teacher in Rogers. And so they're transferring from another denomination to become part of this church family. And so I want to ask you, do you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life? And will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? And really, this is the reason we started a special needs ministry for their son, Jackson. They helped us to do that and inspired us to do that. So I want you to know that. But they've already been a great blessing to our church family. Will you welcome them here this morning? And listen, they did it without even talking to me. So I told them we only sacrifice snakes at Pentecost and we only kill chickens on the fourth Tuesday of the ninth month. Okay? So don't tell them any other secrets. Um, anyway, we're glad that they're here. And instead of running out the door, will you come back here and welcome them and make sure they. We're glad to see you. God bless you. I'm going to go to the next slide.